right? Book club tonight. You in? Meet you there. See you there. Looks like we're all here. Grab a seat and let's get started. I am ready. The Art of War is one of my favorite books, if not my favorite. Can anyone guess why? Because it's not just about fighting, it's about how to conduct yourself when in conflict with others? Carol gets it. For quite a while, all my interactions with people involve some form of conflict. Interesting. This book laid things out for me. Help me understand, you don't always smash yourself against a problem face first. You must understand your enemy before you can hope to defeat them. Hunter, you get this more than most. You understood Lilith, which led you to discover her weakness. With that came her defeat. That is what Nico and the others are trying to figure out. That goth knight thing? <laughs> Emo kids, actually. Whatever. Nico's magic nerd night. My point here, until we know what game Lilith is playing, there's no way we can break the rules. That's the only way we win. So the favorite book of a half-vampire was written by Master Sun. I'm the Daywalker. Of course it is. Carol, what stood out for you? Mm, the chapter about flexibility in warfare. Yes, it presented distinct situations, but at its core, it promoted a philosophy of adaptability. This is a subtle but key difference from the Kree War manuals I know. Those manuals lay out how to overcome every possible contingency. Because Kree commanders always expect an answer, exceptions can flummox the ones who let the rules think for them. I have not met a Kree commander, but humans are just as capable of rigid thinking. Oh, of course. I think that's what the text is working against. The art of war encourages fluidity of thought. The variations presented in the chapter on flexibility are examples, not rote technique. And that's how wars are lost. So I've been dying to know, what is Captain America's favorite part of this book? After this read, everything he had to say about deception and warfare. Ooh, explain. Wait, what used to be your favorite? Discussions of leadership. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I've long since internalized all that worked for me and examined what didn't. But convincing your enemy that your greatest weakness is your most powerful strength. Or the opposite, that your strength is a vulnerability? Exactly. It struck me, especially regarding our conflict with Lilith. So, what's our greatest strength? Lilith has no allies, just thralls. She is alone in this fight, but we are united. Are we? The greatest scientific mind I've known, sorry Tony, just defected to her side. What's to stop any of us from doing the same? I don't have an answer to the question I asked, but I plan to do what the art of war suggests. Learn her weakness. Adapt as the conflict evolves. Keep Lilith guessing. And above all, think. And that'll do it. Great. So what's our next book? I told Carol she could pick the next one. I decided on volume 32 of the Kavat Koth. The what now? It's a cross between a legal text, a spaceborne invasion defense manual, and one of those sagas that Thor seems to love. Okay then. I promise it's not a heavy read. I thought it would be a good companion to the art of war. See you all next time. Hmm. Good girl, Charlie. I'm nervous about my book. I don't know how much of it will translate. Not the language, the ideas. If it teaches me how to swear in Cree, I am in. You don't need a book for that. Just hang around the war room when I'm running maintenance checks on Central. I think you'll like my choice. Give it a shot. That's all I ask. I didn't know what I was getting into when I signed up, but I'm glad we have book club. I just came for the punch. It's fantastic punch. 
I learned how to make it in the war. It has been around that long? I thought it tasted funny. Hydra spent the war trying to steal the recipe, but the best they could come up with was the Red Skull Punch. Wow. Still got it. I've noticed I haven't been talking as much lately. <laughs> that went better than expected. Captain Marvel seemed quite impressed with your selection. Can you keep going after this? No, she didn't. Did she? No, you're just messing with me. The book she chose? It sounds like the Kree version of the book you chose. You think so? I know so. Huh. That went way better than expected. That's all for now. You taking off or hanging out? I should leave. Peace. Peace be with you. Oh, it won't be here yet. Okay. I wanted to talk to you about, uh, actually, let's go someplace else. It's a little personal. I wanted to talk to you about book club. Oh, having a good time? I'm having a great time. Always good to flex the old brain muscles. I need your advice, though. What kind of advice? It's about Blade. I get the feeling that all of book club is just his roundabout way of getting to be friends with me. I mean, I'm touched. He seems like a good guy, but shy. So how do I tell him I'm totally cool with being best pals without scaring him off? Got any thoughts? If you want to be friends with Blade, just tell him. You really think I should just lay it out there? You guys fight hordes of bloodthirsty killers and not bat an eye. But you want to tell another human being that you enjoy their company and you forget how to speak. Different skill sets, Hunter. But I'm always looking to improve, so thanks. I'm up to the challenge. I wish I could be more helpful. Please, you've been more than helpful just listening to me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go catch up with my reading. I'm a couple of chapters behind. I can tell. Watch it. No spoilers. Uh... All right. Oh, all right. The mirror table, our pulse on everything Hydra, really brings an Avengers Tower vibe to this place. It has been useful. The Abbey always harbored great resources, but Stark and the Doctor have enhanced its abilities tenfold. Don't get me wrong, Tony and the other Steven are great. But I believe in giving credit where credit is due. You've also been doing your fair share. And I wanted to let you know that it hasn't gone unnoticed. That is a generous compliment to give. Thank you, Captain. It's not generous when it's true. They say a good soldier should always trust his gut. And if my gut is right, and it's almost always right, I think you have a destiny beyond just defeating Lilith. And what destiny is that? Keep playing it straight with me, Hunter, and maybe I'll trust you enough one day to tell you. Oh, and I have more. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I needed. A chance to quiet my cluttered mind and just... be. What thoughts clutter your mind, Doctor? Ever since the Sanctum was lost, I felt a bit adrift. Lost in a cosmic sea in which I've lost my ability to navigate. I've been giving a lot of thought to the direction my life will take if we survive your mother's apocalypse, but who am I if I'm not Sorcerer Supreme? Sorcerer Supreme or not, you are still an Avenger. But is that all I am? All I want to be? Perhaps this is what you should meditate on. 
Yes, that's a bright idea. Thank you for still having faith in me even when I've lost faith in myself. You are proving to be a most unexpected friend. Okay. Ah! Oh, hey there, Hunter. Startled me there for a sec. Hey, now that you're here, maybe I could get your advice on something? I would be happy to share any wisdom I may have. Okay, um, let's say you suspect your room is, um, haunted? How would you, um, handle something like that? The Abbey is filled with spirits. Might I suggest making peace with whatever specter also occupies your room? Like, make friends with it? That is one way of putting it. I, I don't think we're talking about a cute little friendly Abbey ghost. At around three in the morning, every morning, I wake up to wailing and the stench of what can only be described as a mixture of old socks and eggs that are about 50 years past their expiration date. I looked it up, and the internet said the smell of rotting eggs wasn't just a sign of a regular run-of-the-mill poltergeist, but something, you know, demonic. Are you sure it is not Doctor Strange? Now that you mention it, Stephen does practice magic late at night. Mystery solved, then. <sighs> if only there were someone I could hire to exercise him. Maybe magic? Something tells me she wouldn't mind having one less Avenger living here. Thanks for the talk, Hunter. Let's do it again sometime soon. All right, Talon. Hero challenges are available on every general mission. Things are looking up around here. Bye. Wait, was that it? Or oh, oh, it's right here. Heads up, Hunter. Okay. As a fellow time displaced person, perhaps there are some gaps we can help each other with. Yes, I have a lot of cultural catching up to do. I have time to field a question, and I'd like to hear about America before it was a country. Are tavern songs and operas still the toast of the town? I hate to break it to you, but opera wasn't too popular even in my day. A lot of music from your time became other things. Tavern songs went away with the invention of the jukebox, but parents sing three blind mice to their children to get them to sleep. They sing what? Three blind mice is not suitable for children. That is a grim song about the queen executing Protestants. I don't even think I knew that bit of trivia. I suspect the melody is easy to sing and is very catchy. It is an earworm about wanton capital punishment. Well, thankfully, kids don't really grasp that context. Adjusting to a new time is tricky. We need a support group for people displaced in time. We used to run one at Avengers Tower on the new moon of every month. I'm sure we'll get one set up again once we stop the prophecy. I'll save you a seat next to Miguel. He drops by from time to time. He's from the year 2099. Nice guy. Aha! Miguel O'Hara. Okay, I'm going to continue on with the story. Um, the bell tolls. This has got to be the last time we fight Venom. I. There it is. The creature. And pretty much the entire Hydra offensive. No doubt stealing more of the priceless and did I mention extremely powerful artifacts housed within the sanctum? I don't think so. They're fortifying a position here. You're right. We're never going to get close enough to get a symbiote sample. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say never. Venom problem? No problem. Wow. You got some serious range on that old Spidey sense, kid. Or he got my text. Either way, I'm your guy. Come on, team. I got an idea. Oh my god. Anyone? Definitely should have practiced that more in the mirror. 
Sorry, kid. Can't risk a field trip on this one. Yeah, cause you all have so much experience fighting Venom. Spider-Man's cunning has proven to far exceed his years. In battle, not the talking. Don't see any of us muscling in when the Mandarin's in town. <laughs> okay, fine. I get it. <laughs> What's the plan, kid? Uh, Spider-Man? Yeah. Right. We'll bring Ghost Rider since he's got an upgrade. Uh, not an upgrade, a boost. Buff, whatever. Listen, I'm not a control freak. If you have any good ideas on this mission, I'm all ears. My only idea is to not get killed. Oh, good one. We're totally in sync. Given their history together, I suppose it does make sense to trust Spider-Man on this plan of his. What's the worst that could happen? Actually, don't answer that. Oh, happy to oblige. Ain't that something? Banner. Yep, and there's crisscross, crossbones, and Eddie, and a really big. What is that? Whatever it is. They brought an entire army to protect it. Uh-huh. Sorry, just need to make a last-second adjustment to the plan. Ah, uh, yes. The plan. What is it? Right. Okay, stay low. Wait for my signal. The time wasted. Suppressing gamma energy versus harnessing it. Oh, when Mother sees what I have accomplished. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Eat his brains. <laughs> signal! Signal! That was the signal! <laughs> oh my god. I love it. on you again old friend three two one that used to always work well it did that one time parker report parker status well i am under a little pressure but eddie's right where i want him hey Not here! Not again! Never. Maybe we don't fight her. Maybe we do fight him. <laughs> uh oh. I take it we're on to plan B. Uh, I'd say it's probably more like plan 1.5. I'm betting those smaller bells vibrate at a similar frequency to their big brother. May not be perfect, but they could buy me the time I need to get that sample. We have your sample right here, little spider. Yep, walked right into that one. Okay. Okay. Had to restart. Because the, the music went out, the soundtrack, and I I can't stand it. Um, there's a small chance. Oh, did it.
I forgot what it said. You are puny. Hold still, little one. Talk about a sticky situation. Touch us! Our belts are responding. <laughs> we will always remember this place, Spider-Man. Remember what you did to us here before. We are done playing games. This place will be your doom! Well, he's moved on from wanting to eat my brain, now he's just trying to bury me. That's progress, right? Just hit him with the bells, please. I'm on it! Is that the best you've got? First you die, then we eat! Very nice. Okay. We have longed for this moment, little spider, to squash you here in this cursed place. When you are gone, we shall feast upon your new friend heroes, and then <laughs> devour your precious Mary Jane. Oh. Hey, Eddie. I know that's just Lilith talking through you or whatever, but shut up already! Here comes the heat! It's almost graceful the way you swing through the air like that. They cannot stop us now. I'm trying to get him down just a bit, so. I knew you could do it. Go ahead and do this whenever that happens. Okay. I was well, wondering if that was going to work. Your web is broken, little spider. Your trap has failed. He may be right. This symbiote sample is not worth your life, Spider-Man. We can find another way. Tell that to Aunt May, Mary Jane, Harry, Flash, Felicia, Otto. And about nine million other New Yorkers we're trying to save. If getting that sample means we can stop your mother from destroying this city, it's worth the risk. Just buy me some time. Here we go! Never underestimate the good guys. Incoming. We cannot keep this up forever. But we can. Do you really think your 
puny bell of tin and copper can defy the power of the Midnight Sun. Don't forget arsenic, lead, zinc, and silver. Seventh grade trip to the Liberty Bell. Try this on for size. Mother tells us to hurry. You couldn't meet my new team under better circumstances, Eddie. I'm going for it. Nothing personal, but I think you're out of your league here. Make way for vengeance. This should do it. Torment has only just begun. We've got it. Let's do this. There we go. Much as I enjoy this dance of ours, Eddie, I think it's time we changed it up. So how about we try a little smash up? What? That... not a thing anymore? Let's find out! Make it stop! Now this might sting for just a second, but that's perfectly natural. Stop! Also, perfectly natural. We will destroy you! something I like to call the plan.